Test, test, test. Here we go. The mic, the mic is on the on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host Midnight Robin and we're here for another episode. This time we in OKC and today was the day. It was the Junior Olympic National Championships hosted by Bart Connor Gymnastics at the Cox Center, Convention Center in OKC. It was going down today. Today was day one. Great level of gymnastics to see the Junior Olympics. I mean, when I think of Junior Olympics, I think of the biggest meet of the year for the juniors on the men's and women's side. But today, we were checking out the men's. And it was uh, it was some 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 exciting gymnastics. I just gotta start off with that. I mean, the level of gymnastics that was being done today. I have to tip my hat off to the coaches, the athletes, everybody that put in the work to do that type of hard gymnastics. Because when I'm looking at some of their routines. That some of these balls are throwing. I mean, floor. See, back in the day when we did gymnastics, at least when I was doing it, I don't know, but yo, know, some of our passes, yeah, we would load up the first two passes, but there would be like a light tumbling pass. But now it seems like you have everyone throwing triple full dismounts. I saw a lot of triple full dismounts today. I mean that was that was great seeing that on floor. I mean, there's a lot of triples. There was someone that actually threw a triple back on the floor today and landed it. And landed it. I gotta find out who that was. I'm gonna come back to y'all, Jamas's Bill, when it comes to that one. When I find out who that was, it just happened so fast, it was like boom. So I'm gonna get back to everyone on Jamasicsville. And if you guys know who that is, definitely let me know. On Instagram, email, whatever. But we gonna, we going to make that happen. But he did the triple. And it was crazy because, you know, the triple is one of those skills that everyone wants to see. But are you athletic enough and are you agile enough and do you crazy enough to a certain extent and good enough to throw that triple? Three flips in the air and today... It was thrown on the floor. Yes, that last uh, that last session, session three. You know, so you know all the sessions were great. There were highlights all around. Today was the level ten session, all age groups, and yeah, in Oklahoma City, it went down. I mean, what else was going on today that really struck my eye? Um, We're going to get to the results in a little bit. See a lot of coaches still producing great athletes on a high level. Shout out to Kyle Booker out there. Boom. He has some great gymnasts. Every one of his gymnasts look good. He always has good gymnasts for a while. Okay. You know, Alvarez had great gymnasts. Cypress had great gymnasts. 5280. They threw it down. Man. And today was just day one. Tomorrow's like the level nine. So that's a whole nother set of gyms and athletes that are really going to be looking to really make bid for the national team. And that's really what JOs is about. JOs is the biggest competition of the year. And it's an opportunity for these athletes to finally see the fruits of all their labor and their hard work. In the gym, so have an opportunity, go out to JOs, make that national team. You know, 
I'm sure for a lot of these athletes, when it's their first time going, this is like the real deer. And after you've been there a few times, you kind of get the hang of it. And you're like, yo, is this going to be the year where I'm going to kill it? And then I'm going to, boom, make the national team. Because everyone's going. If you're going to JOs to a certain extent, if you're JE in the Junior League Division, then you're looking to go out and try to be on the national team. And if they're... And if you're in the Junior Olympic Division, well, that division is still the same thing. I'm looking to win it. <laughs> End of the day. Everyone out there, what do we compete? We compete to win. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We compete to win. So, great gymnastics. After day one, all the divisions there, okay? Age 17 division, okay? Brandon... Bryons, he won today. Then in the 18-year-old division, you had Evan Davis. Okay, 16 division, John Chu. And then 15 division, Taylor Burkhart. Okay, so those are your champions leading after day one. That's what went down today in that division. These kids are good. I mean... 5280, can't say it enough, man. They have some really good young talent out there. Great gymnasts. Man, it was just... And for the Junior Olympic Division, 15 years old. Dante Hayes from Metropolitan Gym wins that division after day one. 16 years old. Max Ennis from Sterling Academy of Gymnastics. 17-year-old division, Jacob Murray, and the 18-year-old division, Ben Eilis. Those are your all-around winners after day one in the Junior Olympic division. And what we have tomorrow, we have the level nine competition. And right now, we're going to go into Midnight Robin at GOs. We had a few interviews that I want you all to listen to. Josh Bittner, coach from Florida, Orlando, and Mike Acevedo, coach in Bethlehem. Yo, what's up, Jamassive? I got a special guest, J.O. Coverage. I have Mike Acevedo here. What's up, Mike? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, so what gym are you here with? H Gymnastics out of PA. Nice. So can you talk a little bit about what this meet is? What, what is J.O.'s all about? JOs to me is like the cream of the crop for the boys that wow. do JO and JE gymnastics, you know. Um, they work all year, really, really hard. And then they get an opportunity to come to this big meet and you know and see the best of the best. Nice, okay, so how many how many guys do you have, have, have for this competition this weekend? One. Okay, so um, what's his best event? What are you what are you guys working on? What are you guys AJ, trying to do this weekend? AJ won region seven JO. Um, <laughs> So we're just here really to see what the competition is with the JE aspect because we're going to do JE again next year, you know, level nine. Um, but he also plays in other sports, soccer. So the object is, you know, just to maintain what he has, work a little bit harder on some optional skills for next year, you know, and get out there and uh, kick it, you know. Nice. Okay. So we all know what from Region 7. Region 7 is what? It's Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, New, York, New Jersey. New Jersey. Let's see, in Delaware, Delaware, Maryland. Okay, so out of uh, out of that region, I mean, what are what are some some teams we should be looking out for this weekend? Is to you know kind of be you know get be in there this weekend. I would say Apollo, GMS, Paragon. Let's see, uh, U.S. Gym Developmental. Ooh, that's a good one. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, let's see. Those are like the top gyms that I. Well, you you didn't name any PA gyms. What's up with that? You gotta show some PA gyms some love. All right, let's see. Who? Besides your gym. I mean, oh, Monaco other... Gymnastics. Oh, Monaco. Okay, yeah. nice. All right, sweet. All right, well, um, so what happens? I mean, what are the qualifications for your gymnast to make it on to the next day? Like, what does he need to do? You feel? Me? I think he needs to be at least a 72 or higher to make the second day. Okay. So, because that's what we were at uh, nationals. I mean, sorry, regionals. So I'm, I'm assuming the same score. All right, well, that's Mike Acevedo, everybody, from Ace Gymnastics. Good luck this weekend. Thanks Thank for you. the interview. Thank you. All right, Gymnastics, well, we're back. We're here, Cox Convention Center. We got we got a good friend of mine who I used to compete with 
well, I'm not sure if it was with, but I saw you competing back in the day with Parkettes, Pennsylvania. I gave a shout out to my Pennsylvania people. But um, but now he's in Orlando, Florida at MGA. Uh, so what's this JLs to you? What does that mean to you? What is this all about? This competition uh, means a lot to me. It brings back a lot of memories for my history of gymnastics. It, it's like coming back home. My senior year uh, nationals was right here in the convention center here in Oklahoma. Really? So, wow. Uh, three of my boys have their first national championships where I finished my national championship. So it's a, a quite the uh, emotional uh, ride this year. I also have uh, five boys out here. So uh, the national championships means a lot to these boys. It means a lot to a coach. Um, we worked really hard all summer, all year, uh, put in the amount of time that these boys put in, uh, as well as their schoolwork. It, it's very important to reward them for accomplishing such great um, accomplishments and accolades to get out here. So it has been an uh, incredible season. JO Nationals is the, the final meet for most of the boys because they're too young yet. But to come out here and just represent themselves is something huge. Nice. Okay. So, you know, we're here right now in session one. Uh, so when is the first session where you're going to have your boys compete? When, when, when are they going down? Tomorrow afternoon at 12 o'clock, I have three junior Olympic guys, one level nine, two level eights. And then I have uh, in the evening session, I have two level eight junior elites. Nice. Okay. So what is it going to take for these guys to qualify for day two, you think? It's going to take uh, six for six, stuck landings, all the small details that are very important in, in achieving your high scores. Uh, the biggest thing I ask my boys to do is relax and, and come in, uh, game faces, ready to go, and, and let's uh, try to keep the nerves to a minimal. I ask that if they just go six for six, uh, they'll get the best scores they can get, and we'll, we'll look at the results when the meet is over. Okay. Um... There's obviously a lot of good teams here, but just within your region, I mean, what are some other teams we should be looking out for in terms of their gymnastics? Definitely, uh, we should be looking out for David Ali from Premier Athletics. He's a level eight. He is a phenomenal gymnast. Maxime with Zenith is also another level nine that is fantastic. Our level tens, we have a bunch of uh, level tens. The state of Florida has a couple of great level tens alone. Uh, so it, it is region uh, eight is pretty strong, and, and we're looking to have a great weekend as a, a whole team. All right, well, Josh, good luck for the rest of the weekend. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. And moving on to day two, Friday, May 11th. Today, it's going down. We got the JO level eight and nine. Okay, everything kicks off. The open warm up kicks off at eight o'clock. Okay. And the competition started at 8.50. Then there's another Junior Olympic session for levels 8 and 9. That starts 12.15 for open stretch. And then competition starts at 1 o'clock, 1.05. And then the JE, level 8 to 9s, their open warm-up starts at 4.30. And competition goes down at 5.20. So... Today, this is a review from the level 10 session, all the age groups. And then what's next up with day two with JOs as a level eight to nines. And we'll see who's going to thrive today. But you know, and I'm Midnight Robin, and that's a wrap for the JO updates of day one. Stay tuned for more JL coverage to come. I'll see you next time. When you have a passion for acting, dancing, acrobatics, rather singing, you have the practice for the challenge you're bringing on yourself. Because believe me, it's hard when you're